Matthew. Yeah. yeah, Matthew, please uh, go ahead with the second part. All right. Uh, I titled part two, Positive Formulas for the Molev Sagan Case. Uh, that is what we are going to be talking about. So I'm going to be very specific now uh, about something I mentioned in passing earlier, which is factorial elementary symmetric polynomials. So we're going to define a specific factorial elementary symmetric polynomial, EKK of x and z, as the product as i goes from 1 to k of xi minus z1. So you'll notice there are two indices there. The second k is the number of variables, and the first k is the degree. Uh, there are other factorial elementary symmetric polynomials that I won't go to the trouble of defining here, but uh, EPK for 0 less than equal to p less than equal to k that do have more z variables. But in a sense, uh, at least in this context, EKK is the most important factorial elementary symmetric polynomial. So uh, almost the basis of almost everything after this slide is a formula I found for multiplying an arbitrary double Schubert polynomial in X and Y by a factorial elementary symmetric polynomial in X and Z. Um, so I'll state the theorem, let U be a permutation, P and K integers with K greater than or equal to one. Then there is a relation arrow K on S infinity so this is the same relation as in Satili's 1996 paper for multiplying an ordinary Schubert polynomial by an elementary symmetric polynomial. And there's also a set of positive integers, p, k, u, w, for h, w, and s infinity, such that the product s, u of x, y times e, p, k of x and z has the coefficient of s, w, of x, and y, as you can see, is, is itself a factorial elementary symmetric polynomial in some y variables in z. So as the degree of w increases, both the degree and the number of variables of the factorial elementary symmetric polynomial in the coefficient decrease. Now I've written the z variables are as usual, but the y variables I've written as y sub p k of x. So we're substituting into the factorial elementary symmetric polynomial the indices of y that occur in the set pkuw. And the explicit, explicit definition of that set is the set of all values of the permutation ui, such that i is less than or equal to k, and ui equals wi. So, so these are the values of the permutation that don't change before k as we move from u to w. I just give a quick example here. I've picked u is 4, 3, 5, 1, 2, p equals 3, k equals 4, and I've expanded the product using the Pieri formula. And I've circled the elements of pkuw. So as you can see, those are the indices of the y variables in the factorial elementary symmetric polynomial that is in the coefficient. So there, there's something having a formula for multiplying by a factorial elementary symmetric polynomial in X and Z uh, that, that allows you to do things that only having a formula for multiplying by a factorial elementary symmetric polynomial in X and Y do doesn't allow you to do. So we can actually pick apart other double Schubert polynomials and express them in terms of the factorial elementary symmetric polynomials in order to be able to compute the coefficients. So in particular, there are these permutations known as dominant permutations, such that if mu in S infinity is dominant, then the double Schubert polynomial S mu of Xz is itself a product of factorial elementary symmetric polynomials. So the factorial elementary symmetric polynomials that occur in this product are of the type uh, where the degree is equal to the number of variables. And its product as i goes from one to infinity of e lambda i mu, lambda i mu, 
where lambda is a permutation, uh, sorry, a partition that we associate to mu. So the degree and the number of variables decreases as I increases, and it's a factorial elementary symmetric polynomial in X in ZI. So with my Pieri formula, we can multiply by Schubert polynomials corresponding to dominant permutations by substituting the index Z variables. So I'll, I'll mention one use of my Pieri formula, which is not obtaining a positive formula. It's actually a method for efficiently computing all of the coefficients, C of BW, that is actually, in most cases, even faster than existing methods for computing the ordinary structure constant C U B W. So what we do is given V and S infinity, we start with a dominant permutation and apply a divided difference to the Z variables to express S V of X and Z as a sum of products of factorial elementary symmetric polynomials in X with Z variables having their indices in varying sets and there, of course, will be signs. This is not a positive formula. But having an expansion of this form allows us, allows us to apply the Pieri formula to compute the product. Now, the way the program is implemented, it's not quite as simple as that. The divided difference is not computed explicitly. Um, but instead, the sum is done over a graph of permutations that ends up giving the same result, but, but results in fewer uh, multiplications. Um, and in the ordinary Schubert polynomial case, we set y and z to zero, and this is a lot faster, of course, than the case where we're trying to compute polynomials. And the advertisement, you can download my program. If you have Python 3.9 plus, you can run pip install shubmult, and that will give you scripts for computing these coefficients, which I'll get into a little more detail later. So the strategy in this paper, which has the same name as the talk, a molev sagan type formula for double Schubert polynomials, is to compute SU of XY times SV of XZ by reducing the problem to V being a dominant permutation, which, as I mentioned earlier, can be computed with the Pieri formula. So the most general, easily stated case where this is possible is when U and V have separated descents which I mentioned earlier that Knudsen and Zindrasen considered in 2019 for ordinary Schubert polynomials. So we need to know when a permutation is dominant. So for a permutation U and S infinity, we define its code, code of U, to be the sequence such that code I of U is equal to the number of J greater than I such that UI is greater than UJ. So we're taking the inversion, separating them into the indices where they occur and counting them. And a permutation is dominant precisely when code of U is not increasing. So code of U is a partition. So we can associate to any permutation V a dominant permutation that the referee uh, who was looking at the paper suggests that I call the dominant approximation. So we write this permutation as mu v. So we define it recursively. If v is dominant, set mu v equal to v. If v is not dominant, let i be the maximal index such that code i of v is less than code i plus one of v, which is an index where v fails to be dominant. And then we define mu v equals mu v s i. So this recursion terminates in a dominant permutation mu v such that L V inverse mu V is equal to L mu V minus L V. Now, uh, you, you may notice that the coefficients C U V W Y Z are directional. Uh, in general, if, if you flip U and V, you don't get the same coefficient. So, we're going to be directional with our separated descents condition here. So if u and v are in S infinity, u and v are said to have separated descents. If there exists a p such that u has no descents less than p and v has no descents greater than p. So we're distinguishing u and v. The first permutation is the one that has no descents less than p. 
Now I have found a way to remove this restriction, but the formula is entirely different. Uh, so in Schubert polynomial terms, if u and b satisfy this condition, then su of xy is symmetric in x1 through xp, and sv of xz has at most p x variables. So uh, if u and b have separated descents, we have this equality of coefficients. So for all w such that cuvwyz is not zero, we have that cuvwyz is equal to cu mu v, w v inverse mu v, and y z. Now, this in the second coefficient, we're multiplying by a double Schubert polynomial corresponding to a dominant permutation. So we can apply the Pieri formula to compute this. And this is the main theorem of the paper. So suppose u and v have separated descents, then c u v w y z is zero unless the length of w v inverse mu v is equal to the length of w plus the length of v inverse mu v. If that condition is satisfied, then there exists a partition lambda v such that c u v w y z is the sum over all lambda v Pieri paths. So these are paths, uh, if you recall in the Pieri formula, there's a relation arrow k. So the k in the arrow k in these paths are the parts of the partition lambda v. So it's u0 arrow lambda 1 v u1, et cetera. And the paths are from u to w v inverse mu v. And what we're summing is a product of what I call weights. And these weights correspond to edges in the path. And they're just the Pieri products. Uh, so it's the product for, so at index j, the contribution is the product over all i in p lambda j v u j minus one u j of y i minus c j. So there's actually a bonus. Um, it's actually, I didn't do this on purpose. It just worked out that way. Uh, in the formula in the main theorem, if we substitute z equals y, each term in the sum is a polynomial in the negative roots, y i plus one minus y i, with non-negative integer coefficients. So uh, this formula gives a separated descent formula in equivariant cohomology, where the directionality of the separated descent definition doesn't matter. So just for the purpose of giving examples of when this applies, I'll mention that this gives a positive formula for multiplying factorial sure polynomials s lambda x1 through xm and y times s mu x1 through xk and z, where m is greater than or equal to k. So in particular, this applies when m equals k, which is the original molev sagan case. And it actually gives a molev sagan formula that is positive after substitution. Uh, more generally, it generalizes the Connert case. We can multiply a factorial Schur polynomial in x and y by a double Schubert polynomial in x and z that has the same number or fewer x variables. And again, this is gram positive after substitution. So I'm going to draw some diagrams when I give examples of the formula. So a lambda Pieri path for my formula can be visualized as an array of numbers. The numbers are the permutations in the path written vertically from left to right with a bar in column i under position lambda i. So a term in the product is contributed if a number above the bar in the column is the same as the number in the same row in the column to the left, in which case it will be circled. So if the circle number is the number A and B is the column it is in with column numbers starting at zero, then we have a factor of YA minus ZB and we take the product over all circles in the diagram. So I have an example here. There's a circle four above the bar in column three because it's the same as the four in column two in the same row. And that gives us y4 minus c3. So I tried to find you know, examples I could match in other papers. So the 
the uh, logical place to look would be Molov and Sagan's paper. However, uh, there aren't any examples in their paper. But Knudsen and Tao in their 2003 paper give an example for their molov sagan formula in terms of puzzles. So I picked that example and computed it my way. So in that case, U, V, and W are equal to 1, 3, 2. Uh, then the partition lambda V is 1, 1. So that means there are bars under row one in columns one and two, and there are two columns. Mu V is 3, 1, 2, and W V inverse mu V is also 3, 1, 2. So we're taking 1, 1 Pieri paths from U, which is 1, 3, 2, to W V inverse mu V, which is 3, 1, 2. And I've drawn the diagrams here. <clears throat> In the first one, there's a circled three in column two, which gives you y3 minus e2. And in the second one, there's a circled one in column one, which gives you y1 minus c1. Now, of course, this gives the same answer as Newton and Tau's formula, but they compute it as y3 minus c1 plus y1 minus c2 instead. Now, when you substitute the y, this becomes y3 minus y1, plus y1 minus y2, and y1 minus y2 is not positive. But you'll notice in my formula, what you get is y3 minus y2, which is positive, plus y1 minus y1, which is zero. So the first term is positive and the second term vanishes. So, so this is a positive formula for that coefficient. I wanted to show an example for multiplying two factorial Schur polynomials with different numbers of x variables. Here I picked one in three variables in x and y, and one in two variables in x and z. So u is one, three, five, two, four, lambda v is one, 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 and w v inverse mu v is four, one, five, two, three. So it's one, one, one Pieri paths from one, three, five, two, four to four, one, five, two, three. And this is just one coefficient. Um, the, my formula lets you compute all coefficients w for a given u and v. Uh, but of course, uh, on a slide, I can really only show one at a time. Um, so in this case, as I mentioned, when y and z are different, polynomial with y coefficients uh, must have the larger number of variables. I also wanted to show an example of the Conard case, uh, which is Schubert by sure. So I picked a short factorial short polynomial in x and y with three x variables and the double Schubert polynomial S1432 in x and z. And that has exactly three x variables. So the formula applies. So u is 13524, lambda v is 221, and wv inverse mu v is 461235. And uh, you can see the diagrams representing the paths with the circle numbers and the corresponding weights. And as I mentioned in this case, the polynomial with y coefficients must be the factorial short polynomial. But when y equals z, uh, the coefficients are completely, I mean, they're, they're always commutative, but if you flip u and v, you get the same result. So this fully generalizes to equivariant cohomology not Conard's formula, but the case where Conard's formula applies. Um, and I also just wanted to give one example that doesn't involve factorial short polynomials. Uh, like I said, my slides are intended to be used as a reference. This is probably more useful to look at after they're posted. Uh, but this, for, this example has the benefit uh, that it has two circles. So one is a circle four in column one, and the second is a circle four in column two. So, so the contribution is y4 minus c1 times y4 minus c2. And this is the only diagram. So the coefficient that we are computing is equal to this polynomial. So uh, my formula actually gives you a positive formula in terms of xi minus yj for double Schubert polynomials. This is because if u and w are both equal to the identity, this is a separated descent case. So, and in that case, the coefficient c1v1 of x and y is equal to the double Schubert polynomial sv of xy. 
Um, so I just gave an example here for the double Schubert polynomial S1432 of X and Y, which is of degree three. So if you recall, there's a vanishing formula. If we set X equal to Y, uh, then the double Schubert polynomial vanishes. So in order for that to be true and for the formula to still be positive, each individual term must vanish. And that does in fact occur. If you'll notice the, the Northwest four terms uh, all have a factor of X1 minus Y1, which becomes zero when we substitute. And the Southeast term has a factor of X2 minus Y2 which also vanishes when we substitute. Um, I see. Oh, OK. Um, so I wanted to explain why uh, my formula is positive. So if we multiply a double Schubert polynomial by a double Schubert polynomial corresponding to a dominant permutation, which is a product of factorial elementary symmetric polynomials, we of course can multiply by the factorial elementary symmetric polynomials in any order. The multiplication is commutative and we can apply the Pieri formula in any order we want. Now, while this does give technically the same result, it can be expressed very, very differently and the expression can have different properties. So my formula starts at index one and continues in increasing order. And this is exactly what makes the specialized formula positive. So um, the way this works out, if there is a negative factor after substitution, y j minus y i with j less than i, there also is before substitution, a factor of y p minus c p for some p which vanishes after substitution. So therefore, a term either has only positive factors, or if it has a negative factor, it also has a zero factor and vanishes. So every term is non-negative. Um, other orders may sometimes be advantageous. Um, I conjecture that the opposite order can be used to obtain the pipe dream formula for double Schubert polynomials. Um, I, that's, this is just based on empirical data. It would be interesting to prove if this indeed holds. So that's the content of the paper, a molef sagan type formula for double Schubert polynomials. Now, I mentioned that I have found a way to flip U and V in the separated descent condition and this also involves the Pieri formula. However, it is rather an indirect use of it. So the way we do this to find C U B W Y Z, where U is dominant, is we express the double Schubert polynomial S V of X Z uh, in such a way that it's, uh, it's a sum of products of double Schubert polynomials in X omitting I and Z. And in each of these terms, we have a product, uh, which may be one of xi minus various indices zj. Um, and being able to do this because of the special form of the divided difference operator partial mu w for mu dominant, dominant uh, this allows us to compute partial mu w applied to sv of x and z for any V as a polynomial in Xi minus Cj with non-negative integer coefficients, uh, which is what allows us to flip U and V and the separated descent result. Now, uh, I'll mention uh, that this formula uh, after substitution is not positive, uh, but you could just flip U and V uh, to get the positive formula. So I'm actually going to prove that this decomposition exists using my Pieri formula. So we can express any double Schubert polynomial SV of X and Z uh, as partial V inverse mu V applied to the double Schubert polynomial S mu V of X and Z. Now it's very easy. Uh, I'm going to do this on the Z variables, but it's equivalent. 
if you flip x and z, it's still a double Schubert polynomial. We can pull out of a dominant permutation, the factorial uh, elementary symmetric polynomial in x and z i, and we're left with another double Schubert polynomial as a factor for that corresponds to a dominant permutation in x and z omitting i. Now we're applying a divided difference of, to this so we can expand it in terms of the Leibniz formula. And what we get is a straight divided difference applied to the double Schubert polynomial, which gives us another double Schubert polynomial and a skew divided difference applied to the factorial elementary symmetric polynomial. And the Pieri formula is what allows us to positively compute a skew divided difference applied to a factorial elementary symmetric polynomial. Hence, we have the positive formula of this form as I promised. So given this decomposition, um, we can, there's an algebraic result that the skew divided difference operator partial mu w alternatively applies a straight divided difference and then pulls out an x variable and moves it to the front. It permutes the indices in such a way that it moves xi to x1. So uh, working this out, you can get a formula uh, for the result uh, of c mu v, c mu v w y z, where mu is dominant. And uh, that won't uh, be in this paper, but will be in an upcoming paper. Uh, and as I promised, in abstract, I also have a formula for multiplying an arbitrary double Schubert polynomial in x and y by a factorial complete symmetric polynomial. Uh, the formula is entirely similar, although the relation here, which I write as fat arrow k for, between u and w, is different, though it's still in Satili's 1996 paper. And here the coefficient is a factorial complete symmetric polynomial. And as the degree of w increases, the degree of the factorial complete symmetric polynomial decreases, but the number of variables increases. And it's a polynomial in y sub qk of uw and z, where qk of uw is the set of all wi such that i is less than or equal to k, all of them. Uh, union all wi such that i is greater than k and ui is not equal to wi. And uh, I also have a formula for multiplying by a factorial short polynomial in x and z corresponding to a partition of hook shape, which I won't uh, mentioned here in the interest of time. So I'm going to end with an advertisement for my program. If you download Python, at least version 3.9, what you'll probably get now is version 3.10, that's the current version, and you run pip install shubmult, that'll give you script shubmult underscore py, which I named that way in order not to conflict with existing software named shubmult that computes the ordinary structure constants Schumult underscore double for double Schubert polynomials in the same set of variables express gram positively and Schumult underscore YZ for the molev Sagan case. And I added a recent feature to that uh, that uh, actually allows you to display the result positively. It does, it does not do that by default. Um, so I'd like to thank the organizers again and thank you all for attending. <laughs>